All right, guys, so I'll get started, you know, with this, and I'll actually start with um, a Blackboard, right? On Blackboard, I don't know if you guys have seen it, right, but there's a, there's a file to download, right? Um, it's uh, this one right here called 3D People and Square Pipe Script, right? Make sure that you uh, download it, right? I'm going to cover how to use both of those files uh, today. Uh, when you download that, and let's see, you can click on that. Remember, this is a, um, a zip file, meaning that it has, um, and I just started two downloads. Right. Cancel this one. All right. um, and then I'm going to, right. So we go to the uh, showing folder. All right. And we have our folder right there. Remember that this is uh, compressed right now. And uh, we know because it has that pink, uh, that pink, pink band. And again, the idea for today, uh, I'm going to give you guys basically a lecture, right? Uh, and again, this is being recorded right now. Um, everything will be there so that you can at your own pace, right? Watch it, pause it, apply it, you know, uh, repeat, right? Pause, apply it, uh, and, and practice. Um, so that right here, the most important thing is that you look at my screen right there, pay attention to what I'm doing, right, and, and ask questions if I need to maybe clarify some of the steps uh, for you guys to follow along uh, at home or wherever you're, you're, you're following this, right? So, um, so this guy right there, right, we right click on it, uh, and then we want to extract all, right, extract all. It's going to give us a destination, right, where do we want to save this? I'm actually gonna go to my desktop, right? And uh, we the, the best thing to do is to create a new folder, right? So we create a new folder, right? Um, and then I'll just um, add right now um, people and script for right now. Select folder, right? And then notice that that's the destination now for the extraction. We go to extract. Right, and it opens it up for us. Now, this um, this model, right, I, I, it should be saved on Rhino version five, right? So, uh, should there be any problems for you opening it, just uh, let me know. But it should be under version five. Now, if you open this file, right? Um, so, so we're gonna get get going into, um, I guess, um, humanitizing, if that's even a word, right? But bringing in the human scale and the human figure into your project, right? Um, right. So we will develop, right, the project. And maybe I'll, whoops, do that. Develop is a good word. And, but also we're analyzing it, okay? Right now we're looking at it, we're looking at our models, right, the same way that you do when perhaps you find something new, right, that, you know, you're looking at it like, hmm, what can I do with this? I mean, what potential does this have? And by this, I mean your forms, right? Your figures. What potential do they have? So this 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 exercise that we're gonna do, right, is, is development and analysis, right? And development part of it is that based on your analysis and observations, right, you can learn from it and you can perhaps, you know, modify or again develop that same design with an idea in mind now of how the the a body interacts with the space. Uh, we're gonna set our scale to a quarter inch. All right, so this is important. All right, we're gonna be working with the quarter inch scale at what one uh, equals one foot. Right, so it is important for this final one, uh, final model and final final exercises that you actually do get your scale figures. Right, you guys remember the, the the first model that you guys did, the first half of the of the semester. Right, we're working at a one eighth. Right, so the person was small. Right, this one's gonna be two times bigger. Right, so but the model remains the same. Right, the, the same size. So just the person got bigger. Right. So rather than being a city, right, we can call it a city block. Right. I mean, we're gonna work now in, in the black. Right. Rather than being a district, city district, now it's a block. And actually, it's a good example right here on the wall. Rather, right uh, these are different blocks from downtown El Paso. Right. Um, and 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 uh, we're going to um, you know develop and develop based on that that scale. Um, so this is the file that you guys will get, right? Um, which I'll come back to, and that's how they actually look rendered, right? But shaded, uh, that's that's them, right? It's a sort of a polygonal and mesh 
meshes, right? So I'm going to actually close this. And also within that zip file, right, that we just have just extracted, there is this script, right? This script that is going to help us um, develop some, some structure for our uh, form, right? I'm not going to call them buildings yet. Right now they're for our forms, right? They're just forms for right now. Uh, so I am going to close that, right? Um, it's um, It should be somewhere in my desktop. People in script. There we go. All right, guys. So I'm going to start this, this the same way that you should, okay? So you should have a file right now that has um, all the original exercises, right? I mean, the circle, the grid, the good, the, the bad grid, the good grid, the great grid, and the other grids, right? And then all your solids right here. Uh, the idea is that we get to the final one, the, the replica of the one that you have downstairs, right? And we select that. And we do control copy, right? control C. And we go to a new file. Actually, let me cancel that because uh, it's gonna wanna close that and I don't wanna close that one. I'm actually gonna open it from my desktop, just double click on Rhino, right? And open up a new file. What's the first thing that we set up? Right. Good, right? Our units, right? We type units, enter, right? Uh, set up a feed right now now we're gonna go big right the idea is that right now if you open your model the one that you submitted right it should be in inches right 22 inches 22 inches 22 inches right really tiny right so again units enter set it to feed right distance display fit and inches okay nothing has happened yet right and I do control B as in Victor right uh, which is pasting um, right click on this icon right here for some selected all viewports right and that brings me to the selected objects in all the viewports right um i get i got a question over the weekend right it's like why why is my screen like this right why, why are my forms uh, not solid right well remember that's under your your um viewing modes right here right right now we're in wireframe Remember right now from the conversation downstairs, right? That diagram that was wireframe. Again, the intention is good on that diagram. Uh, however, the, there's a number of uh, factors on it that are not really helping it for that purpose. So here, uh, the best thing, right, is, is shaded. And again, you'll see me go from shaded render uh, to X-ray X, X or ghosted, right? Which are both uh, very helpful for, for what we're going to be doing. Now, I'll go back to shaded. Right, and I'm gonna we're gonna start working with our multi views. Right, no, let's turn them all shaded. Right, shade it and shade it. Right. So first things first. Right. So if I am working at a one to one scale, which is what we should be doing, right? How tall should this a uh, a fella be? About six feet. Right. We should call him, what should we call him? Dude. Huh? No. How about Benito? 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 All right. Benito. Benito. Huh? Benito. <laughs> right. So, so right now he's one and a half inches. Right. So, so that's not right. No. So we want to scale all, all of our model. Right. Um, and right now, I'll, I'll give you guys the scale factor, right? Uh, so we type scale, we select the, the objects that we want to scale, right? Uh, enter, right? Uh, base point, right? I'm going to pick my bottom left uh, corner, right? Now, it's asking me for a scale factor, right? So that means this guy right now, Benito right now, measures one and a half inches, right? And we are working right with a quarter inch scale, right? So Benito should actually be right six feet. Right? So it's actually right on the scale, right? Because in one inch at a quarter inch scale, right, you have four feet, right? Half of that is two feet, four plus two, six feet, right? So the scale factor would be 48, right? We are going to multiply all of this times 48, enter, right, and boom this grows right so now if i go to distance right i'm going to snap to uh say the bottom of that surface right there bring my dimension all the way there right right about 
But I, since I'm not snapping on anything on the top, I'm just eyeing it, which is not the, the, the greatest way of doing this, right? Uh, but we're still, right, six feet and a quarter of an inch. So, so there we have it. So that means, right, in this case, right, my, my structure that I'm working with, right, roughly, right, I have about the highest point, right, how about 25 feet plus a few inches, right? So that's what we're working with. Remember, on the model that you have downstairs, Benito was half that size, right? So that's why things were, were bigger, right? Now, now we're, we're actually increasing the, the scale of our, of our um, users there. Um, also, if you go on to properties, my properties command has not been working actually. I don't know why. I have to go under file properties. Um, you go to a grid. I just wanted to show you guys because that's also a question that I that I've gotten, right? That how do you control your grid and, and not only how to see the grid, but can you make the grid bigger and can you change the gap between the grid? And the answer to that, all that is yes. All right. This is the grid line. That's how many grids you see, grid lines you see there. Uh, minor grid line. That means that each of these little lines rather is one foot. And there's a major lines every five minor. One, two, three, four, five, major grid. Right? And that helps, right? Uh, visually as a reference, right? One, two, three, four, five, about six feet. Right. So so that's helpful, right? And actually we're gonna we're gonna use it for right now. So one of the first things that I want us to start looking into is your 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 project in elevations and in top top view which is uh, how we started actually seeing it by hand right drawing it by hand so we're actually going to start extracting right images of the project right in this way right like this all right so these are all of our different views right plus some axonometrics that we're going to do okay and i'm going to guide you through through how to make these and and uh, generate them um, both in in shaded but also in in render view right? render like this okay? see the idea is to uh, for us to start looking at your project uh, in a different way right uh, kind of getting rid of those colors that so far have been driven the size of these forms right but kind of how, how can you start visualizing this differently right? i mean removing those colors now and now mm, approaching in a more quote unquote realistic way right uh and we're still to define what that means so how we do this right is uh we capture right a view right and we capture right uh to file right a jpeg right and here it tells you um, again, it depends what, if you're using a version five, this window does not pop up. Um, this is a, another great improvement that they did on this latest version. Uh, so uh, at any time that your screen looks different from what's mine and you need some, some assistance on that, just let me know. And, um, uh, but for the most part, it should be the same, perhaps maybe a little bit better if it's an older version, but in order to do that, right on this little preview that we see here, right, this is an, a preview of, of what we're going to get, right? One of the main comments, as a matter of fact, we, we had, or I made that comment right now with Kim's project downstairs, right, is the use of a ground, right? That's one of the things that you're always going to hear with any project, right, that you should include a ground for your elevations and sections, right? So what would that ground be? Well, our base. Right? So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and draw that, all right? So I am going to turn off my grid. Right, so that um, it does not um, overlap with the rectangular or square grid underneath it. Right? It's cluttered. Um, I am going to create a new layer and call it call, call this um, base. Right, uh, I'm going to change this color to a not so dark black kind, like a really dark gray charcoal, resembling sort of uh, your. Uh, materials that you have used right i'm going to make that layer active right um and then now right, i am going to create a surface right with the the same way that you guys um have been uh creating your surfaces for the the model itself 
which is a surface from three to or four corner points. All right. Uh, I'm going to select that. I am going to turn off my solids and my surfaces. And that's why it's nice to use sub, sub layers, right? Because with one, I turn all of those off, right? And I'm going to trace around, right click and create that, right? Uh, I am going to uh, extrude should surface because that's a surface now right, which is that guy right there right now now it's uh, giving me a direction right or, or it's asking me for a extrusion distance right um, your base right in your model was how high one inch, and a quarter. one inch and a quarter all right so how many how many feet would that be All right, so there's quarter of an inch equals a foot. So how many quarters are there in an inch? Five. Edgar, you're correct. All right, so five. All right, so there's four quarters of one inch. Each of those is one foot. And then we have an additional quarter, four and one, five. So I'm going to say five feet, right? Type five and the feet. And we have that. Okay. Um, uh, j just be um, careful, guys. Remember that the the grid, right? That on, on the previous video, I think about I talk about twenty one uh, little rectangles right here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all those twenty one, right? Those should actually be how many? Twenty four, right? Please be. And, and again, if you already went through the actual modeling exercise, you should have realized that. Ah, caray. Right, like <laughs> one second, like did this get smaller or what's going on, right? Uh, or my pieces got bigger. Well, yeah, the, the, the surface got smaller, right? Because I didn't model it correctly as, as we did physically, right? So we have created sort of this uh, board game surface right there. Uh, I can turn back on my, um, my, my surfaces. Um, in the morning, I, I did, in the morning, I did talk about um, how to, um, how do I extend this grid, right? Uh, I'll, I can just cover that uh, really quickly, right? Um, for, for the, for, and maybe even just a, a clarification, right? So I'm gonna turn off my, my grid as well, right? So remember, this is group, so we want to ungroup it, right? Uh, we have 21, so we need to add three more, right? So one, two, three, right? So maybe we can even do that right there, copy, right? Copy them there. Right click, exit one, two, three. All right now, what was the command? All right, connect. All right, connect this guy, this guy right there. Mm -hmm. Right click, repeat that, extend that, and that. And from there, we just use our command extend. All right, extend this right there. All right, oops, boundary and just extend all of these lines in there right? and we project them so that we gain that that space back right? and in all of the the surfaces right now they should they should fit as they did uh, with the previous ah, and I, I forgot to to uh, select this as my my other pick right there my other boundary so I can trim that out like that delete that extend more time select these two enter All right and we we'll continue doing that All right so trim that out so just make sure that you have the right number of units right which would be the 24 all around right in our equilateral i just wanted to um you know make sure that i bring that up that don't try to squeeze all of your forms and in, in 3d uh, into smaller area. Um, okay, so you can select this object right there. Right click, zoom selected in all viewports, right? So that we see it, and we can start extracting our images, right? Uh, before we do that, right, let's make sure that we do something very important, right? So one of the first things that we should do when we open our file, right, set up our file is the units, and then what? 
save it right thanks Alfredo right so I'm gonna do a file save as uh, let's see desktop um, how should we call this I can't remember how we call this oh yes I remember this is um, a3 right for assignment 3 A3, and I'm just going to um, add because I think I already have an A3. I put A3 PM, and I should like the desktop, right? Save, 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 right? So, um, so we have that. Now let's go ahead and, and, and extract our images, right? And export, which is exporting, right? And I'm going to turn off the grid, right? Again, all my blue ports. To, uh, so that you know actually actually let's let's leave it on the on the elevations and I'll tell you guys why right? let's do that so the best way of doing this is again selecting your model right from its perspective view or wherever you can select it all left click right click here zoom selected all viewports right and it, it places it for you right and it centers it on your screen now the command or the action, right, the, the menu you, you, we want, it's under view, capture, to file. All right, now you have two options, right? View capture to clipboard or view capture to file. I know for media, we've been using them, right? Uh, the difference basically is the clipboard is, um, it's stored on your temporary memory on your, on your computer. Once you paste it, but you need to paste it somewhere else. Word, PowerPoint, Illustrator, whatever, right? The file, right, to the file, you actually generate a new file, right? And that's what we're actually going to do right now. So select to file. Uh, notice that um, the size of your viewport, at least by default, guides the size of the image, right? So what we see on your viewport right now, that's the image that you're going to export, right? Uh, additionally, uh, there's all this number of uh, settings that this uh, newer version uh, has w integrated, right? I'm actually going to turn on the, the grid, right? And the reason for that, right, is because I want to leave that grid and be a slight reference in terms of how big things are here. Remember, these drawings are for developing your design. So we can more or less, right, count these lines 5, 10, right, 15, 20, about 25 feet tall right um so right now we're under the front view i'm gonna hit okay right now it asks us right where do we want to save this so uh we should create right a new folder called capture exports right under under your your a3 or your your current file right capture exports and in here right we should have two folders right shaded and rendered because right, we're not export both so again um it, it's just a practicing with your with your displaying modes but it's also practicing with exporting this these images now uh in this case we're working with the shaded I'm going to shade it and notice that i have named them right such I have back front left uh right and top and then we have our four northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest views, right? Which these are your isometric views. I'm going to show you guys how to set those up as well. Um, I'll do this, right? The same. I'll create a new folder, right? I'm going to call this shaded PM, right? And while we're at it, new folder, shaded yeah, in render, 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 PM. Uh, I'll go ahead and select shaded. All right. Uh, this this view right here, uh, it tells us right there on our little tab right there. It's a front, so we shall call it front. And hit save. Okay. Um, and we just go around, right? Set view. We started from the front, right? We go to the right, right view. Again, I'm gonna center it there. Um, you can go onto the menu, right? View, capture, or you can simply type capture. Right? And 
screen capture file, right? That's the that's the uh, command, right? Screen capture to file. Uh, notice that this uh, window pops out again. Now this is our write. And I'm gonna open the folder, all right? JDPM. Right, so we start getting those those views, right? Um, we basically um, follow that same procedure until we get uh, all of these views right here back, front, uh, right, and left. And I'll do the top one as well. It's really the same except that we go on to our top view, right? Uh, uh, we, we position it right as, as best as possible. Remember, if you hold down control, uh, right click and drag, you get what's called your dynamic zoom, right? That it's a little bit um, smoother than you know just scrolling in and out, right? The scrolling in and out sort of does it in increments. Uh, holding down control and scrolling in and out, uh, it's a uh, it's a much smoother transition, right? So it allows you to uh, maybe um, re uh, refine your selection uh, a little bit better. Um, capture, nice right, screen capture the file. And actually, let's actually use this one. Just realizing there's another one, right? If it is this view capture to file and there's screen capture to file. Let's actually do view capture to file. Because that's the one that brings this menu up, right? So just uh, I'm gonna escape. Right? So again, I'll go to capture. Let's use view capture to file. View capture to file. Right? Uh, view, in this case, I'm going to turn off the grid so that, uh, again, it, uh, it's not interfering with the triangular grid. Uh, hit OK, All right? And this should be called pop. All right. So um, there, just go make sure that you go ahead and do the, the next two other views, right? The left and uh, the back. Now, those are your orthogonal views, right? Those are your elevations and your top view. Not really a plan view, but a top view, all right? Um, now, uh, what we need, right, is a three-dimensional view. However, this three-dimensional view is a particular one, right? Right now, we are on we are on what view? Perspective. Our perspective, right? Which is it's a three D view, but we actually want to go into right isometric views. Now, um, I'm still not sure. Sometimes uh, you see that option right there in your menu. You may not see it. I don't know why. Uh, I just know that some in some versions, or I don't, actually it's not about versions, it's just some sort of setting that, that you don't see that view right there. All right, so I do, right, and it has right there, uh, I can set up southeast, right, and it gives me that view. Um, and again, I can zoom into the uh, object, right, right click so that I zoom into all views, right. I can go to uh, export, I'm sorry, um, what's it? Capture, do capture the file, all right. That is the one, right? We hit uh, OK. Now this was the southeast, right? SE. And we can click um, save. Now, if you don't, right? If you don't have the uh, set view to isometric and then this options right there, right? Um, basically, it, it's really simple, right? What you do is you just type ISO, right? And you're looking for isometric. Right. It's, it's, a, it's the first one that pops up there, right? Isometric, All right? We uh, hit enter. And notice that inside of the parentheses right there is asking us, okay, which one of the four, right? Which, which one uh, you want to uh, select? Uh, actually here, I'm going to set a uh, zoom extends to no, right? So that it doesn't actually send me uh, all the way out, right? Because I have the other grid. That, that that it's there in, in the in the area, so I just did the north. I did the southeast. Right? I mean, I can try the southwest, right? And that's that's the view, right? Select the object, right? Assume selected, right? Uh, I think that's probably the best that we can do right there in terms of uh, positioning. Maybe I'll just pan a little bit, holding uh, shift and right click and drag, right? And then capture, view capture the file. This was um, okay. This was our southwest. Hit save. 
Okay, and we repeat that. Set view isometric a uh, northwest. Okay, select the, the object. Zoom selected. Just position it up there. Uh, capture. You capture the file. Right. Okay. Uh, northwest, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and we can repeat this. I said view isometric northeast. All right. So uh, we should end up with uh, if I am uh, correct, right? Uh, nine images, right? So you have two, four, six, nine, all right? Nine for your shaded, and we repeat the same right with the rendered views, right? So that, again, we we have those right there. I'm right. um, really enjoying this, this sort of views right there because, again, it removes that, that sort of noise that the color brings, that it was important for us to, you know, uh, keep a track of our forms, right? But, but now the project is going to take on, a, on, a, on its own different identity, right? So it's nice to see it without those, those colors anymore, right? So uh, I'll go through uh, one or two, but basically it's the same. Right, just go to maybe I'll do the top one, right? Make sure that you set your view to uh, render. Right, this is what we get. Notice that your your project surfaces uh, cover the portion of the grid that is uh, not exposed. So capture, uh, view, capture the file, enter, right? Okay. Now this is the shaded folder, right? We want to go onto the rendered, and this is a uh, View, hit save. You can go to I like the left view since we get a Benito in the picture. Uh, so look at him, he's there ready. It's like a little soldier right there. Uh, so set our view, uh, set view, um, sorry, render, All right? Um, capture. And um, we hit OK, and I think this was left. Right. And, and the idea is that we can print this, right? We can draw on them, mark them, and, and uh, develop your, your design. Right. So that's the first part right, that we should uh, turn to half. And, and I'll get uh, there, there, there's a, a few more things to work with the digital part of this, right? the, the digital drawings that, that, we, that we're looking for. Um, the next part right there is two things, right? The the surface skin envelope, which uh, I guess in the first class we decided it would be called the envelope, right? And the second one, right, it's the structure, right? Which is uh, the, I guess, what uh, will be holding, right, your, your, your envelope, right? Think about the bones and think about skin. Right, so so we can make that analogy right there, and we're gonna use this um, the script that uh, that that I um, that I found online, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Right, so um, let's see. We I think we're done uh, exporting our views. Right, again, those are gonna come handy as we continue to develop your project. Right? I'm gonna go back to uh, shade edit all my views. Right. Uh, So next, right, I'm going to uh, make a copy. I'm going to make a copy. Now, the idea of this is that you will be developing parts of your model, right? So right now you have model everything, right? But the final model itself, right, is going to be a little portion or number of pieces of the actual model, right? And the rest of it is going to be context, right? So I'll, I'll explain more of that. And that's why, again, I have um, I have a, a portion, let's say, of a model, which is that one right there. But um, the rest, we won't be doing what we're about to do. Right? And again, I'll, I'll, I'll explain more of that. And the idea is that you select um, less than 50% of your model, but more than a quarter of your model. Again, it's a rough, rough uh, estimate, 
right? So again, it varies and it depends. Part of what's really interesting about this assignment is, you know, the, all of them are different projects, right? So, so it just depends and it's just based on the, on the, 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 not the size of the model, but how you arrange your pieces, right? So just talk to me if you want my feedback on what portion to select, right? But again, Wednesday, I will, but will be part of what I will be looking into, right? I mean, is this enough? Is that too much, right? That we're actually modeling. And again, based on what we're about to cover right now, that might help you decide what you want to use, right? What portions of your model you want to use. Now, first thing that we're going to do uh, with our model is actually draw or generate that envelope, right? So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to colla collapse these layers right there to save some space. New layer, right? Envelope. I'm going to give it a some bright color let's say that that green right there okay um i'm gonna make that layer active and uh, i am actually going to lock all of my other layers right just so that i don't move anything by mistake right? and, and right now everything is locked except for the layer that i am on now the way that we're going to do this is the same way that you drew your flat surfaces, right? which is your surface point. So that is the command, surface, right? Uh, enter. And we are basically right, retracing the outside of your model, right? And, and remember, this is three to four corners. So at, at number three, I right click to exit, right? And I have that, right? And right click to repeat that. Right, and we go all around it. Whoops, see there, I don't think I I snapped onto the right, I did. Right, right click, like that. Now here for a sample, right, so this surface, right, go one, two, three. This one is four though, right, and we have that. Right, uh, enter, spacebar to enter. Right. Do that. Right click. Right. Enter to repeat that. Right. And we're snapping. Trying to all that in. Right click. Uh, enter. This one is another four point. Right. One, two, three, four. Enter. And so basically, what we're doing right now, besides practicing right our, our, our Rhino controls and 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 uh, snap. It's um, we're tracing sort of the envelope, right, of the, the shell, the shell of your model right now, uh, not acknowledging, right, the inside of it, right? And I'll, I'll show you guys how this starts looking in a minute, right? So right click, and if I turn off right, my solids, right, we start getting how this action right here will look from, let's say, the inside. Right now, how it will look if you know you will play. But if you place someone right now inside of your model, right, or you have the other tetrahedron that is blocking, you know, two adjacent surfaces, right. So, so you put someone in that tetrahedron where well, you can't see outside of that. That's why we're actually casting, right, or tracing just the envelope so that the interior is freed up. Right. So, uh, turn them back on so that we can trace them. Right. Uh, so you just uh, go around them, right, right here. Right, so click, click, right click, enter, click. And again, some of them are going to be three points, some of them are going to be four points, and some of them are going to be more than that, right? Like this one, right, that it has one, two, three, four, five, six, and we go back to the original. And I'm going to show you guys how to do those as well, because those are different, uh, but also a very helpful command to, to know. All right, so I'll, I'll just uh, breeze through this right here. All right, maybe, uh, Karali, how was the weekend? Good, man. Good, all right. No one brings some uh, chocolate or no candy? Oh. All right, guys. Well, mine was good, too. All right. It's a symposium this weekend. 
all about architecture. Half of it was in El Paso, half of it was in Juarez. So that was fun. We toured all these places. And I word that hopefully we'll have uh, Dr. Gonzalez uh, as your reviewer for the uh, you know, project. So stay tuned. So to answer your question, Amy, yes, you will. <laughs> yes, you will present. Are you excited about it? Oof. <laughs> right? So good. Huh? Doctor. <laughs> I brought the doctor in. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no pressure, though. No pressure. <laughs> Dr. Gonzalez. You can get a doctor in architecture. All right. All right, guys. So I got to that point, right? So I have traced all of, uh, all of the surfaces now, except for one, right? This big one right there that it's actually... Oh, look. Missing one. I'm missing one. Actually, I can get it done without turning the surface. That's all it's on. Right. Actually, if we do that. Right. So actually, I think you've used this before, right? The way that we we, uh, we patch this area right there is uh, with this command right here. It's called surface from planar curves, right? So what we actually want to do is you first draw a polyline, right? enter all around it, right? right? We go around that area that we want to patch. And was that it? I think so. Right. So notice that I click now on the edge, right? It gives me, hey, human, do you want the curve or do you want the surface? And he highlights it for me. I want the curve, computer. Yeah. So select that, right? Once it's selected, and I'll move it out, right? So you can see it, right? This is that right there. So again, it, it is sort of the, the wireframe, right? The, 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 um, the outline of it, right? So you select that object, and I'll do it right here on the site right now so you can see it. Um, that's the command surface from planar curves, right? And it just patches it like that, all right? Uh, I'm going to undo, so that actually I now do it in place. I right, select the curve, all right? Uh, surface from planar curves, all right? And we have that. And if we did this correct, right? I can turn off solids la uh, layer right there. And I can take uh, any of these uh, pieces, right? Uh, let's say red, red axis right there. And we open up right here. And the, the idea is to start looking into, well, what's going on inside now? I mean, how does the, how does the, the human body interact with uh, this, this crazy forms, right? Because I mean, I, and the idea, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you this forms because dear guys, this is the way, okay? This is it right here. This is how you design, okay? No, I want you guys to experience, right? What it feels to work with this difficult angles, right? Abnormal angles so that we can reach a conclusion, right? With these projects. Okay, what do we gain out of working with these forms? And what is challenging or what needs to be reevaluated, right? So even at some point, right, I mean, I can select maybe some of those surfaces right there, create a huge skylight right there that we can start looking into it, right? And we can start doing all sorts of things, right? So I'm gonna undo, right? Bring it there, because that's, that's where we should be for right now. Uh, I'm gonna turn off its ISO curves, right? If you guys remember, select all of those forms right there. Go to show ISO curve and right there, uncheck that. And again, because because those those lines right there uh, can throw us off, especially at this point. And actually, I'm going to turn off even the ones from the with the base, except that the base is locked. So unlock it, select the, that uh, poly surface right there, turn off its ISO curves, and lock it back. All right. So good. Uh, this is our first model. And this is the first model that we're actually going to uh, physically create, right? Except that this is now going to be all white. This is going to be, um, what's it called? Poster board? Cartulina, right? Huh? Construction paper? No. <laughs> Poster board, huh? <laughs> newspaper. I don't know, newspaper. Uh, no, no, no. We did this this morning, and this is it. This guy right there, right? That poster board, right? The one that is uh, is not as hard as mat board, right? But but stiffer than paper. Mm -hmm. 
I think it has two faces, no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, just uh, poster board, ideally not glossy. Ideally not glossy. Um, road trip, sure. Now, um, that's the first model. So again, we're, we want to keep uh, track of all of this uh, going on. So I'm actually going to make a copy, all right? And I'm going to, ah, so before that, I'm going to lock all of this. And I'm going to make a copy. Right. And we're going to bring it and like that. Copy and bring that out here. Right. We're going to make a copy. Whoops. Actually, let's try it. Actually, we'll, we'll hold on that copy, all right? Actually, let me show you why. All right. So, so again, I have two models right there. I have a uh, the one with the solid tetrahedrons and I have the one with the tetrahedrons and the skin on top of it. And actually, no, actually, I, I did that correct. Actually, that, that was correct. All right, so I'm going to copy right here because I'd like you guys to see the entire process uh, simultaneously rather than having one, one single model right there. So I'll go ahead and turn this guy on. We're going to back to the original model, which is this one right here. And we are now going to extract right its uh, edges, right? which is, again, the wireframe, right? So we're actually going to see just those lines right there. I'm going to show you a very helpful command, right? Whoops, not render. We're going to go on to shade it. Uh, but before that, right, we're going to create a new layer. This is going to be called wireframe. All right, wireframe, enter. Uh, I'm going to give this uh, some sort of... a uh, Red right there, uh, make it active, right? Go, go into that layer right there. Make sure that my solids are unlocked because that's actually what I'm going to use. And I'm going to do a save, just in case. Okay. How's the recording going? Good. I, I, I promise guys, we were at a one minute and 30, no, one hour and 30 minutes and gone. I don't know where it is, so I'm even afraid of touching it right now. Uh, <laughs> so take, take. I know, but this editing that I have to do. My hands I know, I know, I know. So, so yes, I would love to, guys, but <laughs> I don't think there's a time limit. It's just that. Apparently, apparently, that's our time limit right there. So, guys, take good notes, right? Because. Can guarantee that I will go back and make a third version of this video right here. Right? So, so anyway, you guys ready for this? Another command is going to change your life. All right. So this is called. I right, type extract wireframe. Right, this command extract wireframe. Enter. Now select surfaces, right, solids or meshes to convert to curves. Um, you want the output layer to be equal to current. And you want the, uh, do we actually, no, let's do, let's do, let's do both. But for right now, let's say no, All right? Group output, I'm going to say no. Okay. And again, all of these settings, right? Once you start learning how they work, you're welcome to use them as you please. You know what? For me, it actually works. Work being them for me, it actually does it. Right. Be, be my guest on that. Um, so I'm going to select now the, the forms that we're working with. Right, and I do enter, right? and it's like nothing happened. Right, uh, well, it did, right? it, it, something did happen. Right? I'm just going to uh, turn off again the solids, right, so you can see what happened. Right, and it did just that, right? it, it extracted our wireframe. Right, these are all uh, individual lines, right, that are curves, as, as we should call them here, right, that make up those surfaces. Right. Uh, and you might be wondering, well, what are those helpful for? Well, for a number of these reasons, right? But before we get into that, I am going to make a copy, right? Bring it out here. I'm going to zoom select it. Um, and before we, we actually use them as we are, let's do a little bit of cleaning, right? What do I mean by that? Well, we extracted 
the wireframe of all the forms, right? Now, some of these tetrahedrons, they're sharing edges, right? They're sharing edges, and we just don't see it. I mean, graphically, we see it, but what do I mean by that? If I click there, right? You see how I get that menu, right? It's because there's a number of curvatures that are sharing that same edge, right? And right now, when we're going to use the next command that we're going to use, right, we want to run it with the less number of, of curves, especially if they're not being used at all, right? So we just do a little bit of cleaning, right? So make sure that you delete and leave the longest one. Leave the one that, that is the longest. I think this in this case, there's even two large ones right there. I think so. Right, so that one doesn't have anything right there. That one does. Right. So see that one, that's not right. right. So I'm actually going to undo. Right. So I think that that's it. But guess what? I'm sure there's another one right there. And right, there is. There's a tiny one. Right. So we select that one and delete that. Right. Uh, I'm sure there's another one right there. And there's a little one right there. Delete that. Um, there must be another one somewhere over here, right? Basically, anywhere that, that tetrahedrons share an edge, right? You're gonna have the smaller tetrahedrons edge on top of the largest tetrahedrons edge. And again, graphically, visually, you won't be able to tell until you click on it and you get that selection menu there. And right, we delete that. Is there another one there? No, 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 no. Actually. Keep the longest ones. Yes, keep the longest ones. Correct. Which uh, that's that's part of the, uh, the how the structure will work for us. Right? So let's see if it works. If I delete that one right there, and then I think uh, there's two or three of these little little tetrahedrons right there. So select that one. Delete. Select this one right there. Delete. And one more. Delete. Actually, I will. I'm gonna leave those so you can see what I mean. And I'm gonna run the command and and, and all. So. So you guys can visually see what not to do. All right. So we have cleaned it up a little bit. Now, what? why are we doing this? Well, those right now are just curves, right? Those are curves by definitions. And these curves by definition, they're infinitely thin. They have no thickness, right? So visually, they look like the structure is there. But in reality, we have nothing, right? Because they have no thickness. <clears throat> so if you use before... Rhino, which if you've taken media, you, you have, at least from the manual, there's this command, remember? Right? Command, right? You select the rail, right? Uh, you specify a radius, let's say uh, three inches, right? Uh, N radius, three inches, right? Enter, uh, enter, and you get that. Right? I mean, you create a tubular right, pipe. Right? That, that, that goes along uh, all, all of this right here that if I was to right click right to repeat right uh, can I do multiple curves at once a, you're gonna see we do we can right however right uh, what what you guys are we're gonna be using to make to build this it's actually square right and these are actually square square um, password um, pieces right so i was curious right i was curious like is there a square pipe that, that you actually can use and turns out there's no square pipe command however we are not the first ones to kind of uh, look into it right and google knows it all right uh i was like rhino 3d square pipe and it was you betcha Right. Uh, no, okay. It's this is what came out. Right. Alternative to pipe using a square, rectangular pipe. What about square pipes, etc. So there was right. And one of these links, right, and I like to give uh, give um, I guess um, credit uh, to this person, right, that uploaded uh, a script, right, called multi square pipe. That it's kind of a plugin, but differently, right. They they're executed differently. You guys remember that plugin that you guys done did the tetrahedron? Some if you're using your own version of Rhino, <laughs> didn't like it? Well, you do have to have the latest um, re release and you do have to have a legitimate copy, I think, of the software. I think maybe that's what it was. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, right? Uh, 
Anyway, so I went ahead and downloaded it, and that's what's also on that uh, folder that you download from um, from Blackboard. Right? So I think I have it somewhere here on Blackboard, right? 3D people and square pipes script. Um, and I'll show you how, how this works, right? Because because I, I wanted to see that. And also, it's also graphically, right? When you start doing the render out of these pipes and you start extracting lines, uh, it reads very different if you use um, um, square pieces rather than than um, tubular or circular, right? And this is how it starts looking. Those are your your square square um, uh, pipes. So without further ado, right? Go back to this file right there. Go to shade it, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. Uh, Actually, how about I delete them and I make a copy again? So I like to see them right next to each other. Um, this is the object. So I'm selected. Uh, select uh, the uh, types rather and delete. Now for scripts, right? Type script. Right? And there's a number of uh, of options right here. Run script, load script edit the script. I'm actually going to go to edit script just so you guys get a, get a view what this is, right? And the the, com the complexity of it, or, or perhaps not. So I was telling the, the morning class, right? Uh, sometimes I get asked, right? For those these so-called electives, right? I was like, Mister, what should I take? You know what I mean? Should I take a sculpture class? Should I take a drawing class? A making class, flower making class, and like all of those are great, right? Uh, but I'm sure if you like drawing, or even if you don't, you will get good at drawing, right? You will have some of these classes. Actually, you know, I recommend maybe taking uh, some sort of a coding or, or computer science class that, that talks about scripting, right? Uh, especially working nowadays with software so much, you can actually create your own scripts and your own little programs to even expand what Rhino can do for you. This is definitely the the evolution, right, of architecture, right? That is uh, what this book is all about. And what I'm teaching you right here, right now, guys, is actually the foundation of that. This is very tedious, very hard work, right? But applied in a different way, you can do things really quickly, as this script is going to show us right here, right now. But anyway, this is the communication, right? It's an if-then sort of uh, language, right? Uh, these are all the little menus right there that you get. Right, select curves to square pipe. This is the, the software talking to you, right? And then you, you know, based on your action, right? It goes to one, if not, right? If not, if not, right? And then at the end, you get the, the result that, that we're gonna get, right? So I just wanted to show you this. I mean, it's it's intimidating, right? Definitely my head has not heard that much since taking maybe calculus or something like that, but but it's, it's, it's really impressive what, what you can do. So that was uh, editor. Uh, I would definitely would not try to mess with this one, right? Um, but I uh, just wanted to show you. Now, what we do want to do, the first thing that you actually need to do is load it, right, so that you can run it. So if you type script, right, uh, there's a run, there's a load, right? You go to load. Uh, I have it there already because I have already run it, but you would go on to add, and you find the script, right? open which is already open there you select it click on load notice that my command line change select uh, curves to square pipe I'm going to select all of this and don't forget the ones in the bottom and I think actually I forgot to delete maybe a line right here there. yeah so I'm just gonna select one and so I'll do that one right there uh, select curves to square pipe, press enter when done, you know, right click because I am done. Length of square sides, right? that is the size of the tube in profile. Right? So we're working with an eighth thick material. Right? Anyone knows how many inches would that be if a quarter of an inch equals a foot? Right? So it's half of that. Right, so half of a quarter, right, is one eighth. So half of twelve inches is six inches, right, more or less. So 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 it's chunky, 
right? But um, if we do anything smaller, we'd have to go with the smaller fast wood stick right here, which um, as it is, it's gonna be already challenging to work with this, this small, because even the smaller one, which is 16, really you're just using toothpicks and by then right? just really doesn't really matter but i'll show you why right now so long story short that's six inches right six you don't forget your inch uh units right there enter rotation i haven't with that it won't be that time so press enter and voila right all of a sudden right you get all of this uh um square pipes uh defining your form oh no <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> all right this is this because i think that was the last thing that popped up before this thing crashed <laughs> all right so so we have uh that right there <laughs> so that's uh that's your pipes <laughs> Those are your, your square pipes right there. Now, I'm going to go back up here, right, which is the place where we left those other curves, right, and show you that that's why we don't want to want this, right, because it actually piped both uh, little curves, well, both the large and the little curve segment, right? So then you have to back in there and delete. And again, it's not a problem until it is a problem, right? It's like, oh, man, now I have to go back and clean it, right, because on my rendering, it actually pops, right? The layers are not correct or... You name it, right? But problems are always there, right? So, so you want to do that again before, right? So I'm gonna select them and delete them. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there should be one more right here, right? Because those are tricky, right? Because because visually you don't see them, especially if you go into render mode, view, right? And we have that, guys. We have that beautiful uh, skeleton, right? That that makes up your form. Now we're gonna keep looking into this, right? Because there's some spaces that well, we really have to question what goes on there. They're really not inhabitable, right? No one can occupy those spaces, but can they be something else, right? Can they be a skylight? Can they be some storage? Can they be some furniture? Can they be, you name it, right? You, you name the, the options of, of what they, they can be. Uh, so this model and this model is what uh, we're after doing physically. Right, that's what we're trying to model um, by hand. Uh, let's see, anything else digitally? Because because now I like to get into the, the assignment itself, right? And perhaps pause this and maybe even just save it, um, right? But but anyway, guys. So I'll turn anything everything on so that we can see the sequence, right? So 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 this model right there has the wireframe there. This one has the wireframe in the tetrahedron, but then this guy's over here, right? That's just the the envelope. Uh, the 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 wireframe where we tried the the pipe command the the included command in, in Rhino, and then we uh, went into our script, which actually I think it should work here at the lab because you're not technically installing anything, you're just opening up a file with Rhino. So I think there shouldn't be a problem because the plugin the plugin you are trying to install something into the software, right? So because I, I don't know, did anyone try it actually using the plugin at the lab? Ladies, that you guys were here in the weekend? No? Nah? What, what plugin? What lab? <laughs> what are you talking about, Rob? Correct. Correct. And that's the problem when you're trying to install uh, software here at school. Uh, and again, that's why I really recommend it to work on your laptop. Um, questions on this uh, technical, uh, digital part of the exercise? So, so the idea is that we only select, again, about a quarter to half of the model, right? And, and no, we won't develop the entire model, right? just a little piece right there, right? And at the end, ultimately, just a building, right? A structure. Right? Uh, but again, this can take on many forms, right? This can take on many forms because there are so many projects. You know? What about the surfaces? That's a good, that's a good question. We're going to keep them, and I'm going to go over right now what those are made of, right? Because we have those here, the surfaces on the base, all right? So I guess I'll do that. I'll pause this.